There's been a lot of talk about a Ghostbusters tie-in. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> if they're willing. Uh, <laughs> I love the idea of probably getting the whip that's like a, um, like the, the, the ghost um, beam. Yeah, the really proton cool. pack. And it'll just mm. get rid of the, it'll just destroy a phantom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, that, that sounds like a really great, great whip. What's up, guys? It is Quad Ostrich here. We are back with some Q&A with the devs, part three. If this is your first time coming into my channel, welcome, welcome, welcome to the flock. I'm so glad that you are here. Also, if this is the first time you have watched one of these Q&As, I would highly recommend going back and watching the other past two previous questions and answers with the devs. There is a lot of great questions. I get amazing answers from the devs. But without further ado, today we have Amatsi with us. And of course, we got JM, who is our number one Phantom ear, phantom er, phantom person. Here we go, Matsi. So this is Ask the Abyss. Matsi here. Matsi, who are you and what do you do on the Phantom Abyss? I'm the lead artist on Phantom of the Phantom of the Abyss. Phantom mm -hmm. Abyss. Oh, look at all this art all around us. <laughs> uh, great. Well, uh, thanks for coming on to answer folks' questions. Matze here is going to answer your questions about Phantom Abyss, and I will be giving a demonstration on how not to play Phantom Abyss. <laughs> you should be pretty good <clears throat> by now. <laughs> You'd think so, wouldn't you? You'd think so. I, I, I say that, and I'm terrible at the game. Really? But yeah. how, then how do you paint how do you paint the stuff all the way up there on the ceiling if you're bad at the game? <laughs> Get a ladder. <laughs> ah, see? I gotta unlock the ladder. Psh, uh, of course, JM, you have to unlock the ladder. That's how you get to that's how you get to the inferno. No one else gets it without the ladder. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was so cheesy. <laughs> I'm super excited to go over some of these questions that the community has given to the developers in the Discord. Again, if you are interested in sharing some questions, I would recommend going to the Discord. Posting them there, and you never know—you might get featured on uh, on Phantom Abyss or or, or on my recap. So, but uh, some of the people did have some very good questions on uh, the traps, different trap ideas. Others had some questions about the lore. They got me really thinking about uh, how far did the developers go into these world or realm of Phantom Abyss. Also, we got everything from traps to lore everything in the middle but uh the first question has to do with traps currently as far as natural element traps that we have you have lava that's only in the inferno and you have water if you have the whip that has the curse that damages you when you're standing there for too long i would love to see some more natural elements such as you know in super mario you got the the, the blade of fire that kind of spins around Maybe some lightning coming down from the sky. Or, you know, good old Indiana Jones quicksand that kind of sucks you down into a space. And that'd be terrifying with a devouring rage. Just, you you can't move and he's just getting, he gets ever so close. As in, you get the music just gets it louder. Oof, nah, I'm good. But here is what Matze has to say about those traps. Will you play around with the fire traps or any traps with particle effects? lightning, water, and sand. We've had some ideas about that. We're just kind of like sorting out what, what's the best way to approach it and what works the, what works the best. See what we'll come up with. Nothing really solved yet though. Is that for new traps, like new trap types? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Nice. Got a load of ideas, just seeing what, what ones we really feel like will work best for the game. Oh. So I do see a major flaw in my thinking. How, if you're in the, Inside a temple, how is lightning supposed to shoot you if you're inside? But hear me out. The next room is the rift, right? So it's a, it's a it's a rift in space and time. Who's not to say that lightning can't you know push right out of it there? Yeah, yeah. So uh, if you guys haven't been playing Phantom Abyss recently, you wouldn't know that there's a new update or. It's not really new anymore, but there was an update called Overturn, which introduced the new spinning rooms, which are fantastic, but also introduced uh, small tight corridors. I am curious on what you guys think. 
good or bad. I love the spinning rooms. I think they are a fantastic addition. The small tight corridors for me are not my favorite, especially when I get chased by uh, Devouring Rage because I, I encounter them in the ruins and I encounter them in the Inferno and they're terrible in the Inferno when you get lost and that thing is like, Devouring Rage is nonstop running at you. Yeah, not fun, that, that scares me. So, so let me know down below what y'all think, if you like it, good, bad, pros, cons, up, down, left, right, I don't, I don't know. But balancing between open spaces, tight spaces, Matsi will answer that for y'all. can do this. Something new update specialized in was adding tighter, more enclosed spaces. Are the plans to explore this type of exploration more in the future? Definitely. Boo! Like that, um, Sorry. I'm a big fan of um, just the, the, that variation because like so much of the game is wide open spaces. Every chance that it gets really narrow just changes the way you play drastically and it can actually, yeah, I'm a big fan of it really get, making you on edge. Like this run right here, what you're playing right now, <laughs> I yeah, really that... enjoy it. I really enjoy that map. <laughs> Glad you did. <laughs> Really, yeah, it get, gets you nervous. I, I, I hate the narrow parts. I hate all the parts <laughs> where it gets narrow, especially if I'm getting chased by uh, the old hunter. grumpy hungries. So yeah, but they are really, they are really exciting. I have to admit. Well, now we know who is a fan of tight spaces and who is not a fan of tight spaces. Jam, I'm looking at you. But I mean, I kind of agree with him. I mean, open spaces kind of benefit the Eye of Agony. Tight spaces tend to benefit the Devouring Rage. It is what it is. But moving along, the average player tends to play Phantom Abyss on a mouse and keyboard. But for some reason, there are some of you out there that are crazy enough to play on the controller. Well, this next question is for you. Can we have a button that lets you make an immediate 180 degree turn? On the Xbox controller, the Y button has no action assigned to right now. That's an interesting idea. It's not something we actually have um, thought about implementing. That that's actually a pretty cool idea. I think um, the end for of that. controller, if a controller, it's actually a good point because I use a controller, and I, I think it probably contributes to why I die so much. Because like um, there's only so fast you can turn. Yeah. But yeah, maybe for the controller, because the mouse, of course, like yeah, you can just turn instantly. <laughs> Probably, yeah. I think I would like that a lot, actually. Make Josh do it. Yeah, yeah, I'll make him do it. <laughs> Going back to the idea of traps and adding more traps, there are a few in the game that do not cause any damage to you. Uh, some of them will be the giant chef rolling pin that I call it, tiles like the, the ones that fall whether by pressure or by timed, or the green and red moving platforms. You also do have uh, the jump pads, but anyways, there are a variety of non-damaging traps. I wouldn't mind adding some more. I do know that it could kind of be a difficult thing to make, but again, I have a, a wonderful idea. It is the one of the best ideas I ever came up with, but I'll share it with you after Amati explains his side. Um, will you add traps that do not hurt directly, like slowing traps? Would love to add traps that are more, yeah, le less less killy. More, le don't kill you as much. Definitely something we want we want to work on. Feels better if you have. Uh, I I, will, I personally would love it. Just a chance to be like you know you get knocked by something doesn't actually hurt you. Just orientates you and makes you more aware of your surroundings. Kind of prepares you for what's for what's to come. Yeah, definitely would love stuff like that. Hopefully some of the traps that we add. There is one trap trap that we're adding that I know will actually do something similar to that. Not sure in terms of mud or quicksand. That's something that we are trying to develop, seeing what we can come up with there. The jump pad is more of like an assist than a hindrance, but it is still classed as a trap, I guess. All right, are you ready for the greatest idea I have ever come up with? I think this will blow your mind. This is this is top level, top level stuff right here. So growing up, me and my brothers would play Super Smash Bros all the time. And in the game, there were hammers, but in the rare event, you would have the chance of getting a golden hammer. And in the even rarer chance, that golden hammer would do absolutely no damage. It would be a squeaky toy. What if the lines of hammers in, in, in the, the ruins, the caverns, the inferno, uh, the, the, the rift, and the unknown, right? all five regions, there was a hidden squeaky toy hammer in the line of real damaging hammers. I think that would be awesome. Like, you would hit it and you would go flying. It would hit you and fly, but it would do zero damage. 
and it would squeak. Eh? I, I think it's pretty good. Mati, Ben, Josh, you should write that. I would, I would love to see that. And I'd say that you would have to add the squeak to it. Players that have lucky would think that they're lucky proc, but if they hear the squeak, then they would know it's just the squeaky toy hammer. Also, you speedrunners out there, you can use the hammer for a hammer boost and you would lose a heart. Now, of course, uh, game wise, you can maybe give it a different tinge if you want, or you could completely blend it in to the rest of the hammers. It's it's up to you guys, I think. Perfect, everything. I think it's such, I think it's a fantastic idea. Uh, while you guys mold over and you know leave in the comments if you think it's a great idea if you support me in that duplicate relics are on the on the on the chopping block have you guys considered adding prestige system for relics such as getting duplicate relics as some new effects your existing relics not exactly a prestige um, relic thing but we are definitely developing some new ideas for relics yeah want to make it feel look a little more um, a little more special when you get particular relics. Looking forward to getting all that stuff in. It's actually currently in progress, but not, not really a prestige system. It is something that we have talked about. Yeah, we'll, we can probably, now that you guys have brought it up, we'll probably uh, talk, discuss it again, see what we can actually come up with. There may be something there. Ah, like a tally that someone asked a question to go along with that um, prestige one. How many times you've collected that relic? Like, yeah, like a counter for that. That would be pretty cool. A good way to know if um, you've ever gotten that relic before. If you're gonna, if you're gonna, if you get duplicates, like how many times do you collect this one? Yeah. That way, it still at least adds to your kind of score in a way. Yeah, that may. There's actually something there. That's interesting. But yeah, we'll see how. See if it um, if we can work it in some way. So have you given the squeaky hammer some thought? If not, if not, it's okay. It's okay. But I can already see in the Discord, people people commenting and, and saying that they found the fragile box like 437 times but they're still looking for the, the cute little panda i think it would be a great idea to have a, a tally mark uh and some form of prestige especially if maybe it might change the relic ever so slightly like you know every 10 of one relic that you find something happens i think i think that'd be a pretty cool idea and it kind of you know encourages to keep gathering the same relic over and over again when you've already caught all the relics this next question i can't even share how excited this makes me feel but it hit just i think i think jm's excitement is is a perfect example of how excited i am are there any plans for any boss fights i do have a plan for a boss fight <laughs> oh. i won't say anything else but i would love to get this boss fight in the game Definitely, it involves all the guardians. That's about all I'll say. JM was so excited; he literally threw himself off the map. I thought, like a boss fight, one v one. Let's go. Actually, it's gonna be like a one v three. If you listen to the very end of the clip, he says, "All well, one v five. Yeah, because if if it's all the guardians, that includes T four and T five. That's a one v five. Maybe with small boss." Like, I, I want this so bad. I think that'd be so awesome. Now, one thing that was different in the beginning of the game, which never really gave much thought, was the fact that there might have not been whips in the first place. That's why, if you notice some of the names, don't necessarily match their buffs and debuffs. Interesting. Why do some whip names make a lot of sense, but others seem to have their names swapped? Example, Feather Whip should reduce all damage and Deluxe Whip should award double coins. Yeah. The names are more associated with the whips appearance than they are the actual blessings uh buffs and debuffs on those whips so the feather whip actually has like a um like a decoration of a green feather at the top of it so that's the reason why it's called the feather whip we like to like the debuffs and buffs came um were attached later to what we felt best suited the whips that we had a, that that we actually made yeah it wasn't really associated with the the the, the whips debuffs and buffs are not associated with the name particularly some of them match better than others, but yeah, it's mostly to do with the appearance of the whip. All right, now now you have to have given the squeaky toy hammer some some thought. Uh, if not, if not, okay, I'll give you another trap. Explosion traps. Interesting question. A lot of masochists. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone that joins a, a, a bit of struggle in the game, like I, I'm all down for that. Yeah, we definitely. Um, when it comes to explosion traps, there are some ideas coming. Like definitely the next update, we're planning to get a whole lot of traps introduced and some of them may, may suit a specific requirement. 
<laughs> I do have to admit, I am one of the few that love to have a struggle inside the temple. It gives such a sense of satisfaction when I make it to the relic room, light all the braziers, and grab the relic. If it's too easy, it's it's not that much fun when I finish it. I don't know, maybe I'm just crazy. But I do wonder how they would implement explosions into the temple. The first thing that kind of comes to my mind would be like landmines that when you get close enough to it, it would blow up or maybe a phantom could trigger it to go off and, you know, do a full heart of damage and send you flying into the air. That's the only thing I can really think of when it comes to explosion. I don't know. What do you guys have? Maybe you guys have better ideas than I do, but mods last time with josh we did talk about modification this one Matsu said he would install himself if he could so let's see what it, what it is when will i be able to intel in install my mod that makes the baron rage beatbox as he gets close <laughs> <laughs> oh man i'd love to put that in there for you <laughs> that does sound really cool does like the music still play super intense? You can just hear him like as he gets yeah, close. Yeah. <laughs> that would be great. Uh, that's a great idea. Um, yeah, I'd love to. I'd love for anyone to be able to do that. But yeah, I'm not exactly that friendly for that right now. Matsu, you gotta give the people what they want, man. I, I and and if we do include that, we have to have JM's beatboxing involved as well. Now, as we know, the lore of T4 and T5 is gonna be added soon, changing everything just slightly. Um, I don't know exactly how they're gonna implement the new changes with the current lore. I do know that adding new clothes may be difficult for some people that are still learning the new language. Um, so I know that some people have talked about adding a catalog of all the glyphs so if you're interested in that here you go is there any way we could have a glyph dictionary in game like whenever we discover a new glyph we can discover the meaning in an in-game menu interesting idea a part of um the thing that we actually really enjoyed about the the glyphs is that people when they work it out it's kind of like this whole other meta part of the game that people can actually work out what it says but i think at some point we will it will be necessary to add once everyone actually uh, once enough of it as it really is worked out by the people who are most excited for it adding some dictionary i think would be pretty helpful so again for those that are not too crazy about decoding the glyphs just wait and your answers will be given to you and for those of you that are really really into decoding the glyphs i would recommend going to the fandom abyss discord going to the ancient language plugging yourself into that group of people because they would love to have your help will rift whips have the same mechanic of having one curse and blank blessings or will there be a twist definitely these whips um all whips will come with um base buffs and debuffs but we are thinking of adding a a, a new mechanic that will allow for altering and changing buffs and debuffs but that's a bit later while we stay on the topic of whips, I was thinking about what was stated in previous question and answers with the devs. They want to implement more phantoms. My biggest concern with that is I know newer players are going to have to bless the whips that have to deal with phantoms stealing their coins or making it harder for them to get coins from those phantoms. I remember starting the game off of blessing those whips i was praying and hoping that the temple would be filled with no one so that i didn't have to worry about that and i could have all the chests to myself with more phantoms this can be a little bit more difficult luckily though i'm not the only one with that concern what are your thoughts on separating fast whips like lightning and slide with other whips to make collecting chests more fair for newer players this may have been answered before but i didn't hear the answer yeah I, I do find, I spot people who are using, when I see phantoms, I can spot who's got the actual fast whip or the slide whip. It's like, oh, d I'm not going to beat them to any, any chests, unless they don't know about some. So I'm just like, okay, I'm going to be more careful and looking around. I think, um, yeah, the best thing, yeah, that, that is a tough one. Like that, that's a tough one to work out. I think the best thing that I've found is that I just, um, look more carefully for, um, treasure. Can't say there's an easy answer for that one. 
I do agree with Matsi, it is a difficult thing to solve, but to your benefit, those that usually have the lightning whip or the ice whip tend to be speedrunners and they're not stopping for chess. So if you are looking to bless those whips that have to deal with the phantoms, I would suggest looking for secret chests. So stuff like in the ceiling room with the ledge or behind the right statue. Just take your time, look for those chests very carefully because those that are running are not going to stop for those. Will you guys ever lift the 20 phantom cap on temples? I would love to be able to introduce, uh, have more phantoms appear in the game. That that should be coming in a, in a later update, um, optimizations to the phantoms. So it, everything still runs very smoothly while a lot more phantoms will show up. Yeah, it's something that we are, that we really want to improve on. Exactly, it's almost like I put these clips in order perfectly. Moving the cap from 20 to 50, also going back to the previous where only the Inferno will actually release the phantoms. That's going to all increase the amount of phantoms in the ruins, which is where people will be blessing that with. But regardless of all that, who remembers watching Indiana Jones where he is trying to replace the relic with a bag of sand and then it, the movie ends right there roll credits it was, it was it was such a great movie right exactly what if we had to run back with the relic any thoughts plans about putting on in some kind of escape sequence perhaps as a final challenge after collecting that relic definitely yes we have really wanted to add some kind of escape sequence to the game that's that cool is, yeah yes we <laughs> Yeah, that, that, that is one part of the game where like, oh man, I really want to add something that's like, something that can happen um, once you grab a relic. See how we go. Stay tuned, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Surprises there, I hope. I'm going to take this time to ask if you're enjoying this content to leave a like, subscribe, all the fun stuff. And if you are dying of boredom, hit that dislike. Leave in the comment what you would like to see differently, how it can change and improve. Also want to remind you, 8 p.m. Eastern on Twitch, live Q&A with the devs. It's gonna be on Devolver Digital, and I will do my very best to do weekly recaps. Now back uh, to JM asking Matsi about his inspiration for the artwork. Matsi, you're responsible for like a lot of like the design of like the, the assets, the, the etchings and stuff on the walls and stuff like that. You know, yeah. I mean, just like the whole aesthetic of everything yeah yeah uh yeah mostly yeah i just come up with like um a lot of like the the patterns a lot yeah. of the decorations for the environment and also um ideas of just how all the traps will look yeah um, yeah like that that's mostly like uh, it's i do a fair um because i'm uh i'm lead designer i, I need to uh, keep a a bigger picture over everything mm -hmm. some of the really cool assets of the game are, are due to our um, other artists does an excellent job in making things look really pretty. Were you always? I assume you weren't always into this aesthetic, just generally. But I mean, what did you kind of? What kind of things did you study getting into? You know, getting this game going. Mostly just like you mean, like for look, looking at concepts and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mostly just looking at a whole range of um, South uh, American civilization. South, South, yeah, South American civilizations like the Aztecs, Mayans, um, Incas. Mm -hmm. Deliberately didn't want to go anything specific. Wanted to make it look like it's from that kind of region, but it's like a, a, a more ancient civilization. Something that like has been completely lost to time. Yeah. But may have like you know branches into other civilizations. But yeah, definitely borrowed a, a fair bit from those kinds of yeah South American cultures. Nothing specific. Uh, it's all pretty much like look at the way they um, made their some of their decorations and kind of like go look at that and try to flesh out that particular aspect of it. Like there's yeah. a lot of kind of like um, snaking path kind of like uh, block shapes, like Tetris kind of construction things. Yeah, there is there was another part that informed that visual design was like trying to make it feel like okay, this temple is about like um, rooms being pieced together. So I kind of try, I try to do that with all the patterns as well. Like if you look at the wall, it's just like shapes um, next to each other. There's like L shapes and um, U shapes and some Z shapes. But the whole point was to be like, make it look like jigsaw, like mm -hmm. the environment was also a jigsaw. Cool. Yeah, that was like, that, that was a big inspiration. Like when I was actually building it, it was like, okay, I want all these patterns to kind of resemble 
in a really abstract way, they are rooms next to each other that like, seem to be randomly stacked or slotted in next to each other. Yeah, that was largely how those patterns were designed. That's... And almost like snaking pathways as well, like pathways that lead to dead ends and also lead, that lead out to places. There's a bit of a mix between um, rooms, look, uh, blocks looking like they're spot next to each other, and like if you look at the, the symbols up at the top there, where mm -hmm. the ID is being displayed, mm -hmm. the temple ID is being displayed, it's kind of like paths that kind of loop into dead ends or lead out. Yeah, like the, the walls are kind of a metaphor for the whole game. Yeah, yeah. There is a lot of like, um, that's mainly where the idea for those symbols came from. Just like whoa, blending of South American cultures as well as selling the idea that this temple is. There's something strange here. There's only one explanation. The tunnels are changing. Constantly changing and being, yeah. and being rearranged. Secret tunnel. I like that, like kind of, I don't know, it's not actually like recursion, but like that's the word that pops into my head where it's like you've got like the big thing and then within the big thing you have a little version of the big thing. And yeah. Then, yeah. It's kind yeah. of nesting, maybe. Yeah, fair bit of that going on. And also, with, with, with some of the other symbols, I don't know if anyone's picked up on these particularly, but um, some of the patterns, they're not symbols, but they are, but they do have an aspect of, like, um, of what they are associated with. Like, for example, you'll see some traps have a certain kind of pattern to them that means it's a trap. And, uh, and some, and most other decorations will be more, like, um, will have certain other patterns that say they're just like a wall or a piece of decoration. Um, what was the last thing you caught, caught there? Uh, you were saying <laughs> uh, that traps will have a certain pattern, or th there'll be a certain pattern near traps, and then others that are like, I'm a wall. Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. That's basically it. Summary. It was a good summary. <laughs> Thanks. Nailed it. Good job, JM. But I do really enjoy listening to Mati talk about his inspiration on the artwork, how he came up with different ideas, and the, and the little things he adds, like the, the difference between traps and walls. I, I, I don't know why, when I thought about the lore, I thought it took place in the Middle East. Because the more and more I look at the temple, the more and more he talks, the more and more I'm like, duh. It, 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 of course, it's South American, Central American aesthetic looking temples. As well as the temples, the last Q&A we talked about the hub, Mata has some additional information. In the hub world, you can explore around way off to the side and even on top of the main temple. Is there any plans of hints or stuff to be aware of? Yes. Yes. There are things um, re I really want to get a bit of exploration going on in, in the hub. Places you can find, like to, you know, little secrets um, to be revealed, maybe extra details in the lore or cool things that you could possibly like you know a special item that could be in there in there somewhere want to add stuff like that into the hub where you can actually yeah explore it and push the limits of like some people have gone into crazy spots in the hub and it's like i don't know how you did that <laughs> and it's just like yeah maybe you maybe we should add something out there to be like you know if you got here here congratulations free twitch whip yeah <laughs> hidden somewhere in the hub <laughs> uh, yeah but yeah i would love to um do more with the hub in that way, make it more of a place you can explore. Now Mate just mentioned having different symbols for walls and traps, but what if the wall was the trap? Like why aren't there spikes on the walls? I, I, that's one thing I'm just surprised it's not in the game. Why are there not spikes on the walls? But also, what if there was no wall at all? Have you given any thought to making fake walls that can be whipped or button activated treasure room? Yes, I've given some thought to that. We'll see how we go adding those kinds of things. But yeah, like I would love to get some of that stuff in. Anything um, just to give a little bit more new interesting things to look for in uh, in the temple environments, new ways to explore it. Yeah, I, I would love to add stuff like that. I know that Josh mentioned phantom interactions before so it'd be pretty cool to see a phantom be used to open up a fake wall or a fake door but the real question is what is a phantom when we the players die in the sense of law what happens to do we die or spawn again in the same temple so it's not completely um fleshed out yet but it is more like um an essence of you gets trapped in that temple but you are still able to escape like it's like it's like you you are being drained or like partly being sacrificed. Yeah, the, um, there's more to come with that, but that's that that's all I'll say so far. I can't wait until the new lore comes out because I understood it completely different than that. I thought that when a player died, 
that was it. That player is dead. That character is dead. And that you are reincarnated as a, a different temple crawler. And the reason I say that is because your player models will change randomly. You're not the same one as you were the last time you went in. So logically speaking, that means you are a different person, even though you're still underneath the same name. Like I would be always quad ostrich, but sometimes I'd be a male. Sometimes I'd be a female. So it's two different people. I, I never, I never thought of the concept of I'm the same person, just an essence of me is being left behind. This next question really has me thinking about the lore and how far in depth did the devs really go? Oh, there he is. There's yep. a motive across the whole temple of a dragon and a snake. There are some relics that depict them too. What are their significance? Or in lieu of direct answer, will we find out in the future or of tablets and similar? I can answer that and say you will find out in the future. It is, um, yeah, yeah, stuff that stuff that's actually, that will be explained in later updates with lore, I think. Is the best way to answer that one. So I'm glad you've noticed, actually. I'm gonna be honest, I did not notice the imagery between the snake and the dragon until this question popped up. And I decided to do three runs. Uh, I wanted to go to the ruins relic room, caverns relic room, and the inferno relic room. Uh, basically, all these pictures that you see that are covering my face are all the different images that I found. Uh, there are probably more that I may not have seen or did not encounter. The main question is, are they the fourth and fifth guardian? Let's see. Are the snake and dragon the fourth and fifth guardian to be revealed? <laughs> I don't want to spoil anything about that stuff. When it all becomes clear um, in the lore, it'll, you'll, you'll understand. So let's put on our thinky caps. Is it possible that the snake and the dragon can be the fourth and fifth guardians? They do have their own relics, very similar to the big three, but they also have two variations. You have the snake that has a variation in T1 and T2, and they have variation for the dragon in T1 and T3. But there are many pictures that actually depict this dragon and the snake together, but also there are sometimes in rooms where it's just the snake and sometimes just the dragon, which is very different than how the guardians are depicted. I do want to go off script just a little bit. I have a ton of theories going back and forth between the snake and the dragon using the Aztec, the Mayans, and the Incan mythology, but I wanted to kind of wait until the lore is a little bit more flushed out before I start making theories and speculations. But the one thing I did notice that was a very common idea is that snakes kind of have a representation with the celestial bodies. Now, that stuck out to me because I know that they are thinking about implementing star in the hub and that snakes are a representation also of death and rebirth as it sheds its skin. So that for me kind of represents the player that when they die, they are rebirthed in the temple with a different skin, a different player bottle, and those that are being saved are gonna be up in the hub ceiling, as you can see. I never knew a door closed so you couldn't accidentally go the same way twice. That's helpful. Yeah. <laughs> I suddenly got worried I was going the wrong way. Yeah, if, if you ever, but that, that, that is something I noticed as well. No one, everyone knows where they're going. So they never accidentally go back down the same path they've been before on the relic floors. So that they never see the closed door behind them. I just had some serious, because the, the entryway into that path looked just like the other one. And so I was having some serious doubts as to whether or not I was on the right path. Until, yeah, until you see like, oh, it's closed. Well, yeah. obviously got that one. Nailed it! I think it's, it's a subtle addition, but I'm glad they included it. The, the closing of the brazier doors so that you can't go back to an already completed room. I know that when I was first playing, and even, even sometimes now I will get lost. I sometimes roll and get disoriented on which way I just came through and which way I need to go through. And so I know as a newer player, that would help tremendously. This next question, I don't know how I feel about it. I'll let Mate talk about it and then I'll explain my side of it. Aside from the endless possible start trackers, can access collected coins be utilized in some way in the future, either for cosmetics or hub upgrades? Currently they just poof. They progressively made the hub look like it was covered in coins. People treasury style, if you know what I mean. Yep, yep. There is definitely something that we are in, um, working on right now. Some way for 
additional relics to be a little more um, unique, I guess, like to offer something different to the game. These are all cool ideas. Definitely, I'll keep them in mind when talking to the team, team about um, what we're going to do with that. I'm going to be honest again, I don't personally like the idea of bringing coins over from the temple. I feel like he's handled that job perfectly. They already talked about you know, allowing you to use keys more to purchase other features, which I'm guessing are going to be whip cosmetics and customization of the player. I don't think coins is necessary. Plus, I like the fact that when you go into the temple, everyone is at zero coins. Everyone's kind of on even footing, even though everyone may have a different whip. But who's ready for more traps? When will we get a trap that ruins your frames per second for a period of time? <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Like a... Like a when are you trap? adding a mouse trap? Ooh, oh, like like a um like a, a a treasure chest that is like a a mimic, like a fake treasure chest. That'd be pretty cool. Brutal. Yeah, I like it. That's that's really cool. Working on it. <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts on invisible platforms or terrain? It could become more invisible as you get closer. Oh, ooh, I like that idea. Yeah, these are they they're really cool ideas. FPS, mouse traps, or invisible traps. Which one do you guys prefer? When I saw a mouse trap, I was definitely not thinking about a mimic. I was thinking about the old board game where you have a little mouse trap cage. It kind of drops and fell on like a phantom and would hold them in place. That's what I was thinking. But a mimic chest would be very interesting. Kind of similar to the real wall or fake wall you know maybe maybe symbols around it that would signify whether it was real or fake it would force the player to slow down look at the surrounding and judge whether or not that was something real or or fake but if i had to choose out of the three i think i would prefer the invisible platforms that would become more transparent as you got closer kind of force it to be a memory game uh, I think it would be a lot of fun while being chased by the Divine Rage as you're forced to memorize the different paths that are before you. Yeah, I, th I think it would be awesome to have the invisible paths that would become more transparent as the Divine Rage is just getting closer and closer and closer. The, play the abyss seems to be a different dimension. How do us players cross over from Earth? Again, more lore to be revealed. It is a bit of a mystery, but... Um, we have um, we have discussed. Uh, we'll try to get those. Th those will definitely be hinted at and described a little bit in the law. But yeah, to come like that 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 will be revealed in a way later. And that is the last question I have for tonight. Perfect way to end the video. How do we travel from where we are to the shining kingdom? Are we serpents that are traveling across celestial bodies, shedding our skins in representation of death? and rebirth or is the snake simply just the fourth guardian i cannot wait for the lore to be flushed out so i can dive into this further see what i can come up with some crazy fan theory you know maybe figure out who if it's not the snake it's not the dragon who who are the fourth and fifth guardians why is there a panda in there and why, where did the fragile box come from those are all very important questions i would love and hope the lore solved hey guys so the developer decided to drop this while i was editing the video i didn't have a chance to prepare everything it is the invasion update it is going to include new rooms new traps and new inhabitants i'm super excited i know that we were teased before with the mobs so i'm guessing that is what's going to come in um, and then for the new traps and new rooms I don't know what's going to include the picture that I'm about to put up. It doesn't really show too much just besides the new mobs that are involved. I have to give credit uh, to this member in the Discord named Latte Pamir. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. He or she did mention that there happens to be kind of like a, a middle pressure point. And maybe it has to do with something about activating or deactivating the spawn for either the rest of the room or for a short period of time, that'd be pretty cool. Which it makes sense that maybe some whips in the future will have to do with the spawn, maybe deactivating the spawn when you get nearby, similar to that of the wood whip that allows you to deactivate, basically deactivate the rotating 
dart statues. Again, all this is new, uh, and I'm just trying to give as much information as quickly as possible. But it does drop this week or later this week, so I'm super excited for that. Hopefully some of the stuff that we talked about in this video is gonna be in there. Who knows? We're about to find out. But I do wanna thank everyone who has watched this far. I do wanna thank Motsi and JM. I've enjoyed making this video and I enjoy making the other ones as well. Again, if you enjoyed this, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, comment, all the fun stuff YouTubers tell you about. Also, don't forget to live stream, 8 p.m. Eastern, Devolver Digital, also plan on making these again weekly so don't forget to subscribe so that you can get the notifications. I also do have a Discord that you can be a part of that will let you know when I have new YouTube videos up or when I'm live on Twitch. And until next time, I'll see y'all later. Um, punt seeker? And um, I'm just correct and going to punt seeker. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that could have been worse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nuts. I didn't realize what I was getting into when I made that name. <laughs> ah. Yeah, I really didn't know what I was getting into. <laughs> Someone else said, like, um, could have started with a C. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What you can't really talk about, because crunch is not okay in the video game industry anymore, and we're really working against crunch. So as a crunch seeker, mm -hmm. that's just not okay. Yes, they're out of bounds. Out of bounds. <laughs>